Uh, hi, Karen. Greetings from Toronto. How are you? Oh, hi, Toronto. Great to see you. Great to see you. Oh, can I tell you what an understatement it was for me to see you back on screen? You looked fabulous. You were fabulous. Why has it taken you so long, my dear? I don't know. You have to ask Hollywood. <laughs> oh, come on. If you put it out there, I'm sure you would have been able to get roles. But you, look, you are so good in this. What was it when you saw the script that you went, yeah, I really need to be in this film? Well, I love this character of Miss Melody. You know, my own mother suffered from dementia. Oh, sorry. And, thank you. Yes. And um, my sister took care of her. And um, so I had firsthand experience of what it is when a person is disappearing and they don't know it at first, yeah. and then they do, and or they do and then they don't. Right. And um, the character was so delightful in the way that she was unaware of her difficulties. And then of course, when it would overcome her, she she would freak out. Yeah. Uh, so I had a great range in that character, which you know I like a challenge, like other actors. For sure. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so, you know it, it's interesting that you say that because yeah, it's heartbreaking to watch somebody go through this, and as you know firsthand, uh, unfortunately, most of us do. Mm -hmm. um, but when I watched you play her, I love the fact that she was just always had a smile on her face. Her eyes were always glistening, you know, like you just wanted to give her a big hug. I just loved her so much. You must have really <laughs> walked away loving her, honestly. I did, I did, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's true, it's how I felt watching it. I honestly did. When I got the part, I had very little time to prepare. And a young actor friend of mine came over and we just worked through it, uh, all the different peak scenes, and we worked through them. We made decisions, and I had physical moves that would help me for every important scene. Not that every scene isn't important, but you know, challenging scene. And then the director was so willing to work with me to find the deeper side of the character, what yeah. was life like before, you know, what is she bringing to the table? Right. And that made it very pleasurable. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And I wanna ask you about working with um, young Tate Dewey who plays her grandson, Chris. You know, when we first meet him, you can sense that there is some goodness in him really, and that, that he's broken, that obviously something happened. I don't wanna give it all away, but your relationship with him, I could just feel on like just watching it as a as an audience member that you two got on really well. It felt yes. like that. yes, we did. Tell me a little bit about working with him and working with it. You listen, you're no stranger to working with young kids, my friend. You go way back for that. So what was it like working with him? <laughs> well, you know, Tate was very inexperienced, and as you said, you know, that's not my first rodeo with inexperienced kids yes <laughs> but um he was very um willing to learn and to listen to the director and the director worked very very closely with him and um I think he looks wonderful for the part don't Absolutely. you yeah. yeah and then the other young people were fun too so he had a fortunately some young people to hang out with because yeah. the rest of us were all ancient please oh my god please come on are you kidding you first of all look phenomenal i don't i don't even want to, i don't even want to say we your ages but you you are you you keep it young my friend it's great to see you and let's just talk about the oscar winning uh cast here we have lewis gossett jr God bless her cloris leachman before she passed away tatum o'neill i mean what a cast yeah, all these Oscar winning actors came yeah. out to do supporting parts. Amazing. And and so I, it was a great thrill for me to meet Lou Gossett Jr., for example, I'm to sure. meet Tatum. 
I, I knew Cloris from Hollywood. We had worked together when we were uh, doing a fundraiser for the Equal Rights Amendment. Wow. Yeah, way back when. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, that must have been- I had loved her since uh, I'd seen her work, but I had loved her as a collaborator and as a supportive professional from yeah. that work we did. I'm sure, I'm sure. You know, Karen, I obviously I can't not mentioned Little House on the Prairie. I mean, you know, come on, really. I grew up with that show. I never was not on my television growing up as a kid. I mean, come on. And, um, you know, we loved it so much. We, it was just, you know, for you, listen, it was, it brought you into the forefront. It was your bread and butter for nine years, nine seasons, which is amazing. But you just released your memoir, um, which I am going to run out and get because I was reading some excer excerpts from it. Um, Wow, um, I don't even know what to say. There's a lot of things that you talk about in that in that book. Was it a cathartic experience and why now? Well, first of all, it just took me a long time to write it. It took me a long time to be willing to share such intimate experiences with a reader. Yeah. And so that was a process of layers. And then the book was rejected by all the major publishers. Wow. So that took a long time because you have to wait for them to read and then reject and then go yeah. to the next one. So that took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And then once you go with a publisher, the process of bringing the book to fruition is very slow. So it's just taken this long it's not that all of a sudden I was ready yeah, right mm -hmm. yeah um and I think the book from the people who've read it the book is really really interesting and people will not mind that it isn't the same as Little House on the Prairie yeah yeah no there's a lot of revelations was it was it at the end of the day Karen a very cathartic experience for you I mean you I don't even want to talk about Little House on the Prairie and what you had to go through on that set with Michael Landon which are stories that we have heard before but even growing up and what you went through and and, and admitting you know your own alcoholism and and everything I mean wow very brave but had to have been a very cathartic experience I would think well it is and it's so nice you know it's like I, I have nothing to hide. Yeah. And the other thing that's so fantastic is the feedback I have gotten because of the love people have for Ma. Yes. I, mean, I worked really hard, but I never could have dreamt of this kind of love coming back to me. Uh, it is really very moving. Very, very moving. I wouldn't have known if I didn't bring out the book. Wow, really? That's yeah, amazing. That, well, it, it's how it is. Yeah, wow. No, she was a beloved character. I loved her. I wanted her to be my mother. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no offense to my real mother. My, my real mother's amazing, but you know, she, I would have taken you as my second mother any day. <laughs> <laughs> and you still keep in touch with the girls? And I do, absolutely. <laughs> You know, there are all these Laura Ingalls Wilder museums and yes. historic sites. And so they like to invite us to come and have the fans come. Yeah. And that gives us a chance for a really nice reunion with each other. Oh. And we love that. That's so wonderful. That's so good to hear, Karen. Well, it's been my absolute honor to talk to you today and a pleasure. You're such a delight and, and you are so good in this movie. I, I urge people to see it and, and especially people who maybe are dealing with this in real life, you know, to get a sense of maybe a little bit of comfort and that there is, there are ways to deal with it. And the other thing is music therapy is so important. Yes. It makes such a difference. Yes. It's amazing. Yes, I I have a friend whose profession is as a musical therapist working with people with dementia. Yeah. And it is just phenomenal what she's able to do. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of help out there. For sure, for sure. Well, thank you so much for your time. And, you know, when you have a chance, come visit us in Toronto and I'll take you for a coffee, okay? Oh, I'd love that. I had one of my best friends used to live in Toronto. Oh, that's so nice. Well, you are you got a new friend in me. You can come <laughs> with me. So what a delight. Thank you for your time today, Karen. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Okay, take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.